what determines whether or not you win is how determined your voters are. Oh, they're very determined. So, and ours I'll are very determined. I, <laughs> Gen Z is voting at the highest rates in American history of any generation before us. We are coming for people's jobs and we have one thing to say to our enemies, which is get your resume ready because we're gonna win. It is election day across the Lone Star State, including multiple important runoff contests in the stormy greater Houston area. Among the highest profile races is the Democratic runoff for the District 15 state Senate seat. To determine who will permanently fill the Texas Senate seat left open by now Houston Mayor John Whitmire. Molly Cook is currently an interim Texas state senator. She did win John Whitmire's seat, but only as a placeholder to fill out the short remainder of his term. Today is the real election, the one which will determine who officially gets the seat. Molly, or her Democratic but more conservative opponent, Jarvis Johnson. Hello, Molly Cook. I'm hoping I can count on y'all's vote. Thank you so much. Pivotal to her campaign are David Hogg and Kevin Lotta, young founders of a super PAC called Leaders We Deserve. Their organization has invested $300,000 in Molly's race. Okay, 2001, West 14th and a half should be this one. Fast Company spent election day with Molly and Leaders We Deserve here in Houston, knocking on doors, visiting polls, and uncovering the business strategy that might just change our nation's politics and give hope to a whole generation. And when you're in the middle of door knocking and it's election day and it's about to go crazy, the winds right now have to be approximately 40 miles an hour and it's wild. So we're getting in the car and we're gonna see if we can continue door knocking. Oh, damn. Oh my God. Holy shit. Um, I gotta call you back. I'm gonna go the other road. No. I can, let me. Damn, Molly's good. That's a good state senator right there, I'll tell you that one. The sudden storm threatens voter turnout, and in a race this tight, Molly will need every vote today. I mean, it's like, it's the compounding climate change. We've never weatherized. We don't have a single very power line. Everyone wants to know the number one issue, and in Texas, that's actually very difficult to choose. We have a lot of real public health emergencies here in our state. Born and raised here in Houston, Texas, Molly is an emergency room nurse and a longtime community organizer. Uh, Medicaid expansion is a huge priority. Common sense firearm safety reforms is a huge priority. As a woman and a nurse who's had an abortion in this state, access to reproductive health care and bodily autonomy is extremely important and top of mind. And I've been an environmental justice organizer for the last several years. The storm only intensifies, putting a halt to all campaigning. More hikes. Oh my god, I'm sick about it. I hope nobody loses power again. The team decides to shelter at Molly's house. <laughs> Molly's a nurse, so you're, you're okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. She's ready to go. We have quite know. a few Gen Z staff members and a lot of Gen Z volunteers. Jamie, I mean, you raised a million dollars for Molly. That's and like, that's student. insane. And he did it like in, while he was in his college classes, like in between classes. Kids who are fresh, they're angry, they're staring down the barrel of a climate that's not sustainable and a planet that won't look the same in 50 years. And it's signed just like that. Yeah. Wow, that's it's crazy. crazy. I know. With only one hour before polls close, the team heads to the most popular voting location in District 15. Young people are vastly underrepresented, and a big reason for that is, I mean, we all know campaigns cost a lot of money to win. Um, you have to raise a lot of money. So young people often just like don't have the donor connections, they don't have the donor networks. The deck is stacked against you in so many ways. And that's why David and Kevin founded their super PAC, Leaders We Deserve, to support young candidates around the country. And to be clear, young means under 30. Throughout American history, some of the most successful presidents we've ever had tend to have started when they were less than 30 years old. Uh, Biden was less than 30 when he started. LBJ was less than 30. And it just makes sense, right? It was a really long-term strategy where they worked to take over state legislatures and then took over the rest of the country from that. Having launched less than a year ago, David and Kevin have already raised over $5 million and are slowly building a powerful roster of young candidates, progressives who, they hope, will help change the nation's politics over the next 30 years. 
ultimately, Gen Z has the greatest advantage anybody can have on your side in politics. And it's the one thing that nobody, no matter whether it's the Koch brothers, the NRA, or anybody else can buy more of, which is time. We are going to outlive most of the people who are currently against us. Yeah, so, I mean, our opponent's right there. We spent $300,000 to try to defeat him. My opponent has run entirely on the campaign that experience matters. And he is older, he has been elected before, um, is currently serving in the Texas legislature. If your experience is what you're running on, then your experience deserves to be examined and possibly challenged. One of Johnson's policies that David takes issue with is around gun control, as he is a survivor of the 2018 Parkland school shooting. President Biden's generation didn't go through school shooter drills, but they did go through nuclear bomb drills. And that generation went on to pass some of the largest arms reduction treaties in human history. The difference with our generation is that in this instance, the bomb is going off multiple times a year. Five weeks after Parkland, David and his fellow students founded March for Our Lives. His efforts eventually led to a historic bill mandating stricter gun laws in Florida. Now his main focus is leaders we deserve. Final 30 minutes. Yeah. We're partying tonight at Patterson Park Patio if you want to come. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. When, do you, like, when do your results usually start coming in? 715, we should have vote by mail and early results. I don't know where to go. Or should I call you, I'm sorry, Senator? You don't have to call me that, but I love it if you do. Um, no, we got I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Like we did absolutely everything we've needed to do for two and a half years, laid everything on the line. As the polls close, the team regroups at campaign headquarters, anxiously awaiting the first results. Molly, however, waits elsewhere. My campaign manager and I will be alone when we get the early voting and vote-by-mail results, which again will give us a really strong indicator of, of possibly how this election will go. So something is in. Uh-oh. Early vote and mail is in. Oh, shit. We are down. We are down by 400 votes. Okay. It's an extremely vulnerable moment. We are down 56 to 5,200. What's you go. the percent? 51.67 to 48.33. Is that the full votes? That is the full early in mail. Got it. We lost mail by 300. And early, we lost by 60. Got it. Damn. It's going to be, be close. close. Wow. It's going to be really close. Wow. But before they know it, it's time for the election night party. And what they thought would be confident indicators are anything but. Well, what's the results? What results are you have? Oh, wait a minute. Go back to that right here. I just want to know if this is. And then Molly arrives. A request comes through to turn off the cameras for fear that Molly may actually lose tonight. Do you want them to just stay away from Molly or do you want them to literally leave? At the very least, stay away from Molly. But Kevin talks them down. You know, I think, every, I, think, I think everybody just sort of like handles this a day differently. And this day is the culmination of like the, I mean, the, the incredible amount of work that she's done. And you know, this is for many people, it can be like a really stressful day. So she's at 48.30. She, um, she's falling behind. As the night carries on and the vote doesn't flip, Molly makes a bold move, deciding to address her supporters from a place of uncertainty. I'm Senator Molly Cook. I use she, her pronouns. <laughs> we are awaiting final results. It's very tight. We may not know until tomorrow morning what the final results will be. And I am overwhelmed with gratitude. There's a reason why young candidates lose and older folks have a structural advantage, right? Because they've had their names on the ballot for because they have more relationships with wealthy people, they have more relationships with stakeholders, and the biggest one is access to money. 
That is the biggest one by far. We knocked like 72,000 doors. We made like 64,000 calls. And y'all, we reached almost 10,000 voters. We would not be in a place to be competitive in this race without leaders we deserve support. Molly would not have gotten the money she needed to win the race. We would not have gotten the paid media out. And hopefully, young candidates around the country see what leaders we deserve did here and see that as an opportunity to say, hey, there is, there is a way for me to do this too. Um, and I think that, that could have a real meaningful difference. So we are here tonight to celebrate all of our hard work and all the things that we have accomplished. And our community has very high standards and very high hopes. And that means we don't always win. Either way, I love y'all so much. I fucking love this state. And I can't wait to pick up right where we left off and keep working. It's the work of a lifetime. Thank y'all so much for being here. I'm not in Molly's head, but I think based off of her speech earlier, you can tell that she feels you know, a mixture of emotion. She's ran for this seat before, right, uh, in the past and it's not always been the outcome that she's wanted. We've been waiting for more and more results to come in, but they're just trickling in, a, you know, 10 votes at a time every hour. And everybody has to go home because the bar's literally closing. Are we gonna get any sleep tonight, Kevin? I don't know, I don't know, <clears throat> I don't know. The next morning, by a thin margin of just 74 votes, Molly wins the race. Emergency room nurse Molly Cook appears to have narrowly prevailed over state representative Jarvis Johnson. Cook says voters purposely chose a deeply progressive candidate to push back on Republicans in Austin. This isn't something that you can change in one election. We're not gonna save democracy in one election. What we're doing here is playing the S&P 500 for 30 years, where we're looking at the best young people under 30 that are running for office, helping them run and doing everything we can to support them. Because it's not gonna get fixed in this election or the next one or the one after that. It, we have to get to work every election, making it slightly better.